first time we've ever had one of these. Yeah, yeah. And we've been at this for a while. For a bit. Uh, how long has it been? I think about 14 years. Oh. Yeah. So when I explain to uh, new founders that are starting up their companies that venture is a long-term um, you know, game, long-term journey, this is too long. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm here to announce that this will be, I'm hoping, well, the last time Roger's presenting as a CEO, and um, we can work on something maybe to change that in the coming year. Yeah, yeah. We were both also a lot lighter when we first invested in the company. Do you agree with that? Uh, yeah, a bit. <laughs> but, you know, 10, 20, 50 pounds. You got a lot more hair, too. Yeah. Okay. So when we... Um, when we first invested in, uh, in Roger's company, I think there were about eight employees, maybe eight or, eight or ten employees. There were more rats in the office than, than employees. I remember that. That is true. Uh, and now you have... Uh, about 400 employees. Close to 400 employees. So. Ten, ten rats. <laughs> um, I have a lot of questions for you, but what I'd love you to do is just uh, really quickly explain to everybody what we really do at Proof. Yeah, it hasn't changed much from uh, the kind of initial idea so we make it easy for businesses to prove the identity of their customers. Today, if you look at like you know, just applying for a bank account online, it's a cumbersome process, and the bank is not even sure if you are who you claim to be. Proof makes it so that all you need is a phone number, uh, which sounds almost too simple, but uh, you'll see increasingly in the U.S., as we you know, kind of saturate the U.S. and roll out further, uh, you put in your phone number, you get a text with a link, you click the link, and that's your application to create a bank account, to check out of a merchant, um, it's a bit model of the fact that you can take your phone anywhere in the world and it just works. You know, it, there's no like friction. Uh, one little point to that that's pretty amazing is that because our customers don't ask you who you are, you can't lie and say, well, well I'm Kevin, bill him for this transaction. Right. Um, and the likelihood of uh, everybody here being using Proof's technology without knowing it is pretty high, right? Very high. We think we cover about 90% of the U.S. adult population. Right. And um, over 1,000 customers in nine out of the 10 largest U.S. banks. 18 out of the 20 now. 18 yes. out of the 20, okay. Yeah. All right, that's great. So a um, couple of things I really want to, to focus in on because one of the things that um, in the early days I was critical of you um, doing uh, was the fact that Roger was always in fundraising mode. So um, a round would get done and, and he, he brilliantly you know, got the round done, great investors, and then um, you know, I thought, okay, great. Now he's going to start doing the job as CEO. Um, and yet, it's almost like the day after fundraising, you were back fundraising again. So one of my major uh, messages to every entrepreneur is, guess what? Fundraising is not a discrete process. You are always fundraising, and this is the guy I always think about. Um, tell us a little bit about what was going on in your head and why, how you figured that out. You know, I've done this a couple of times now, and I think, as everyone here probably knows, um, a lot of this is timing. You, you have to obviously start a company and it's too late, and it's too late, and you're always early, and then the question is, how early are you? And you always have to have enough capital to get to the other side. And so that's, I think, one of the most fundamental jobs of a CEO uh, is to make sure you have enough, enough in the bank uh, for all the things they have to weather through, especially these days where the macro uh, you know, climate is so unpredictable. And I, in fundraising, like in all things in life, it's relationships. Um, I don't know of many cases where I just met someone, they wanted to write a check. You meet them, you get to know them, they, they talk about you, they back channel you. Like, and so you constantly have to just keep the relationships going. Um, you know, one little uh, technique we use, we often don't go to people and say, hey, can you write us a check? We say, hey, I noticed this company in portfolio, I think they'd love our product. And they're happy to make the introduction. And then, of course, they ask the, that company, like, so do you like this? And then there's nothing better, almost like, as Julie said, as like one of their portfolio companies saying, wow, this is pretty amazing. And that way they kind of chase us a bit. But it's a long-term process of creating and maintaining relationships. Yeah. Um, and you've done that also with investment bankers. And long before we even thought about, you know, what the end game was going to be for Prove, um, Roger would, at almost at every board meeting, there, we have another investment bank presenting. And, all shapes and sizes of investment banks, the really small specialists and you know, the really large ones. Um, how, is that, how did that help us get to where we are today? You know, uh, you know people talk, I mean, each industry is pretty small. I think we like to think it's uh, big, but you know, they all speak to each other. They all they, they go from one for firm to the other firm, and I think constantly having them 
when they walk into our board meeting, they see people like Kevin and others at the table. That gives them a sense of confidence of, you know, who are, you know, who's Roger involved with? Like, what kind of folks does he work with? And uh, so it's just a matter of extending our network further and further, and it kind of feeds upon itself that way. Yeah, because uh, especially from an investment banking standpoint, you don't want to be starting at a like a cold start yeah. with those relationships when you when you need them. So um, the company is um, on file to go public. We, um, of course, are in an environment where that can't happen. Um, but you did a lot of uh, work also to start getting the company IPO ready. It's not something that you just decide, yeah. you know, one day to do. What was what was that like? Well, it, it's everything people say. It's a, it's a tremendous amount of work. Um, a lot of it was on our finance team. Uh, so we had to put a lot of things, you know, they're trade-offs, and that's the thing you have to acknowledge and be, be kind of clear with the board that if we do this, we can't do these things. And so we put a lot of things on hold because of that. But it also disciplined us, because ultimately you have to tell the story in a way that resonates with large groups of people that have no idea, like, what the word authentication even means. And so it really helps, uh, helps kind of humble you because you think that what you do is amazing and most people are going to fall asleep. And, uh, and so you have to kind of frame it in a way that, you know, here's why this is, a, like, add value to life. It is a great investment. Like, it, it kind of makes you look kind of from the outside in in such an important way mm. that it helped us really shape our story. Um, so while it didn't go through yet, um, it really helped us define, you know, where we fit in the larger ecosystem. But there's still, there was a lot of heavy lifting you know, to be able to get to the point that we would be ready yeah. to take the company public? And is that, and that's very different than if we were, you know, positioning ourselves for uh, an acquisition. Yes, and then, you know, of course, when you do that, then people sometimes want to acquire the company, so then you have, have several processes. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's difficult to figure out how to choose the bankers and the economics among the bankers and your ticker symbol, and you know, like, it's just a tremendous amount of work. It took about a year. Mm -hmm. And it was probably a third of my time. Yeah, um, Roger. You, so you've been through from, you've been through the entire life cycle. You've been through multiple economic cycles. Um, the business uh, also, you know, had to sort of evolve to find the right market fit before um, everything really took off. But what advice do you have for? Like, we have entrepreneurs here um, that aren't far behind you. Um, that are sort of the mid-stage. We have some that have just, you know, launched their businesses. What's the advice that you can leave with them? Other than how great Relay is. And That's a given. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm in Calgary. Um, I think, um, you, know, it, you know, ultimately this is about storytelling, and you want to consistently, constantly evolve your story, you know, and that means everything from showing a demo and watching. You know, I remember I reading that Steve Jobs would hire more zoologists than, than anyone else because he wanted to study how he put people in a room and they see how he interacted with the device. And that's like mana from heaven. So when you tell your stories, when you show people demos, you almost have to listen and watch intently because, you know, we're all lazy. We're all have pre you know, We're thinking about dinner, right? And so I think that was a big part of our, you know, I think the way we sold really, I think we showed them a demo. It didn't really work, but I think they thought it worked. Um, and, and we constantly have demos. In fact, many of you will see a demo from me today uh, because that just that kind of tells a story, and it's just about that storytelling. And eventually you connect that story to a market opportunity, to societal needs. You know, today um, everything we do is online, and so how can we trust that we're interacting with, you know, Kevin when we're online? Like, that's a pretty big problem. We don't know if dead people are voting or if they're bots on Twitter. So what Prue's trying to do connects to larger societal themes but has to make money, and demos and storytelling. Uh, our stories, I think you could argue, have gotten a lot better. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I used the word, uh, you, you once asked, like, can you describe, prove, and I said the word entropy somewhere, and you're like, no, think you drop that word. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, saying it in simple terms is, is, is vital. And if you can't say in simple terms where your, your friends and your partners and spouses don't really get it, then that's you know, something you gotta keep working on. Great, Roger, thank you. Thank you. Good.